Good evening, and welcome to Counterculture with Danielle D'Souza Gill. The culture's gone crazy, media's gone mad, and reason has become repugnant. Here, we focus on facts and how to fight back. Tonight, we're going to be talking about how to save the West. It seems that ever since ascending to the Holy See, Pope Francis has made a name for himself by calling for acceptance and inclusion. He famously extended an olive branch to the South American pagan worshippers of Pachamama, and he's advised Muslims to seek answers for life's questions in the Quran and not the Bible. Critics of the church, especially those who are anti-Christian leftists, look at these as a refreshing break from stuffy traditionalism, instead dogma that sets the church apart from all other powerful modern institutions. To them, Francis's off-the-cuff remarks are a breath of fresh air in a church that takes itself, and by extension, the God who founded it, all too seriously. But that can't be the only reason why Francis is such a darling of the same political wing that wants to see faith subjugated to the state and ultimately eradicated. Whenever a danger of crisis rears its head, Francis's response is to always preach the same leftist pablum that establishment Democrats and other anti-Catholics spew. Francis has criticized pro-life Catholics of, quote, breeding like rabbits, using the same stereotypical language you'd find in a Marxist dissertation. In response to a Texas school shooting, he'd call for gun control in the United States. He's on record pronouncing that Catholics have a moral obligation to take the experimental COVID vaccine. He promoted an acceleration of the UN's climate change initiative, sounding positively Greta Thunbergian, proclaiming that, quote, future generations will never forgive us for not doing more to protect the earth. Politically, he never misses a beat to sound like your average secular NBC nightly news correspondent. But when it comes time to resolutely defend the tenets of the faith, such as calling out pro-abortion Catholic politicians like Biden or Pelosi, reinstating the priesthood of Father Frank Pavone, or decreeing government suppression of the faith in places like China, this pontiff remains mum. It's why it's so hard for mainstream Catholics to continue defending him. Many remain silent about his beliefs, which is understandable, while others are not too happy with him. Pope Francis portrays himself as an opinionated free thinker who sees striking a balance as a philosophical priority. But it's hard not to notice that there is very little on the right side of his scale. In 2015, he shockingly admonished Catholic educators not to proselytize in schools. Now we have a student in a Catholic school in Canada being arrested for trying to attend class because he opposed a transgender policy allowing boys into girls' bathrooms. Where's that hip and edgy pope on this one? Nowhere. When it comes to abuses of transgender ideology, the feminist author of the Harry Potter series, J.K. Rowling, is far more outspoken than Pope Francis. Yet silence alone wouldn't be half as bad as what the pope has actively done to conservatives within his own church. Catholics have long had anecdotal evidence that the hierarchy within the church is militantly anti-family and pro-homosexual. Stories have long circulated about gay nightclubs and seminaries and priests screening porn, stories which have only grown more scandalous under Francis's stewardship. From promoting degeneracy on the one hand to suppressing virtue on the other, Francis is now actively trying to suppress the usage of the older and more traditional form of worship, the Latin Mass. This suppression is surprising because he stands in direct opposition to his predecessor, Pope Benedict. Benedict loosened restrictions on the Latin Mass during his pontificate. Ironically, Pope Francis's rationale is that the Latin Mass and its aficionados are too rigid, so he's rigidly suppressing it. It's a move many consider odd because the traditional parishes are flourishing, while the modernist parishes are not, especially in a post-COVID world. We recently got a rare insight into the disagreement between two living popes who hold opposing views on this topic. Pope Benedict expressed dismay to his longtime personal secretary, Archbishop George Gonswain, for his memoir, which has been published in Italian under the title Nothing But the Truth. Whereas Benedict allowed for the widespread use of the Latin Mass, Francis has been rather ruthlessly rolling back those permissions through a series of pronouncements and coercive moves. 
while Benedict conceded Francis had the authority to do what he wanted with regards to the Latin Mass. Archbishop Gonswain also says, quote, but on a personal level, he found a definite change of course and considered it a mistake as it jeopardized the attempt at pacification that had been made 14 years earlier, end quote. The pacification in this case refers to the rift between Catholic traditionalists on the one side and proponents of the new mass on the other side. Traditionalists see themselves as the more loyal of the two groups to Catholicism. So to be confronted by such an openly antagonistic leader like Pope Francis means that this simple disciplinary action comes across as an almost personal slight as if the Pope is jilting his most loyal community. Which, if you think about it, is shades of our current government, where a suspiciously CCP-friendly president is using the government to attack his political adversaries, who also see themselves as freedom-loving patriots standing against China-style communism. Until recently, the resemblance was merely passing. That was until a group of FBI whistleblowers revealed that the Bureau has been trying to brainwash its agents into thinking that traditional Catholics, the very same faction that Francis is trying to kick out of the church, are somehow related to the scourge of, quote, white supremacy. A leaked memo assigns a new domestic terrorism classification for this group under the initials RTC for Radical Traditional Catholics. Much of the memo was inspired through the poorly informed musings of the Southern Poverty Law Center, who offered a jumbled account of random right-leaning Catholic groups that may or may not actually be connected to the Latin Mass. Some of their suspected violent terrorist groups are just engaged in apologetics. And if the hate mongers who wrote this had done any real research, they know white supremacists and Catholics have historical enmity for each other. The whole reason the Catholic fraternity, the Knights of Columbus, were founded was to counter the DNC's KKK. For the record, the FBI is not supposed to be in the habit of taking law enforcement or counterterrorism advice from a partisan group of hack attorneys with little to no experience in either. But it seems that once again, the government has been caught red-handed trying to conjure some new boogeyman in time for the 2024 election all at the expense of the fundamental rights of citizens it ostensibly serves. We won't expect word from the American bishops on this, nor the Pope, with rumblings coming from the Vatican that the next round of suppressions will not only target the Latin Mass, but reverent vernacular masses as well, this whole operation suddenly appears to be a much coordinated effort. For all intents and purposes, it seems that the Vatican and DC have been on the one side attacking from the church and on the other side, attacking from the state. It's an unenviable position to be in for Catholics, but we must all remember, Catholics, Protestant, believers, simply in freedom and morality, we would all do well to remember that this is only the start of our continued descent into tyranny. There's room for everyone on this ride.